This video explains how to calculate the mode of a data object in the Python programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. In the first example of this video, I will show you how to calculate the mode of a list object. And for this, we first need to create an example list, as you can see in the first line of code. So in this line of code, I'm creating a list object, which is called my list. And then in the next step, I'm printing this list below the code box using the print function. And then you can see that our list contains six elements and these elements are character strings. Now, if you want to calculate the mode of this data object, then we also have to import the statistics module, as you can see in the second code box. And then in the next step, we can use the mode function of the statistics module and we can apply this function to our list object. And in this case, I'm also using the print function to print the output of the mode function below the code box. So after running this line of code, you can see that the character X is returned. And this character is actually the mode, so the most occurring element in our list. In this first example, I have explained how to return the mode of a list object. However, it's also possible to get the mode of a data frame column. And this is what I want to show you in the next example. And for this, we first need to import the pandas library, as you can see in the next line of code. And then we need to create an example data frame using the data frame constructor. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is created. And we can print this data frame below the code box using the print function. And then you can see that our data frame contains 12 rows, the two columns x1 and x2, which contain numbers and characters, and a third column, which is a group indicator. So let's assume that we want to calculate the mode for only one of the columns. So in this case, the column x1. And then we can apply the code that you can see in the sixth code box. So in this line of code, I'm subsetting our data and I'm extracting only the values of the column x1. And then I'm applying the mode function to this data frame column. So as you can see, after running this line of code, the output shows that the value two is the mode of the column x1. It's also possible to return the mode value of all columns in our data frame. And we can once again apply the mode function for this task, as you can see in the next line of code. However, this time I'm applying the mode function to the entire data set. And this returns a new output, which shows the mode for the first column, which is two, for the second column, which is x, and for the third column, which is A. In the last example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to calculate the mode by groups in a data set. And to do this, we can apply the group by function to our data frame. Within the group by function, we need to specify our group indicator, which is in this case, the group column. Then we need to apply the HEG function and within the HEG function, we need to specify lambda, the value counts function, and the index attribute with square brackets zero. This entire code is shown in the description of this video. So if you find it too complex to write it yourself, you can simply copy paste it from there. However, after running this line of code, you can see that another output is returned at the bottom, which is showing our three different groups, A, B, and C, and the other two columns, X1 and X2. And then it shows the mode for each of the groups in each of the columns. So in the column X1, the mode is five for the group A, seven for the group B, and two for the group C. And actually for the column X2, the mode is always the character X. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. 
I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.